Hello and welcome to the European Prophetic Council. Indeed, there are prophetic voices in Europe. And one of the things that encourages Dr. Sharon Stone and myself, who hosts these broadcasts, is that the fact that the prophetic voice is being released now says that the Holy Spirit is being poured out in a new measure across the world and across Europe. Today, we are delighted to have with us two guests. I will introduce Rob Cates, first of all. Rob lives in the United Kingdom, in England specifically. Rob is a member of the British Isles Council of Prophets. He's also a trusted and upcoming prophetic voice in the United Kingdom. And Rob works very closely with Dr. Sharon Stone, with the uh, prophetic mentoring days, and also with my church. Rob, welcome. Dr. Sharon? Oh. I would like to introduce you to my friend, uh, uh, Milan. And if, if I don't say your last name right, Pressburger, close. Uh, 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 thank you. And uh, his wife's name is Judy that's not joining us today. But I met them. Actually, they came over to a conference that in uh, uh, the country of, of Hungary. And uh, our hearts connected immediately because of the prophetic and not only that this man carries the prophetic he's in a strong apostolic group but at this and he's trained in the prophetic so he has uh uh many around him but i'll be honest i don't see the um the other prophets to the nations like milan and so we just welcome you here today because you are standing today among prophets to the nations. And so we don't want you just to have to train today. We don't want you to just equip today, even though we all love doing that. We don't want you just to edify, exhort, and comfort today. Um, this is our moment to truly be uh, what we are made to be as prophets to the nations. And so we just welcome you in that authority. And as I start on that subject today, let me say this to you, that uh, I was I was up doing my Bible reading this morning, and um, I I think I got maybe twelve chapters of Elijah of of Isaiah read, and you know it's all about the nations, and I begin to recognize a pattern, and that's one of the things I enjoy about reading things in context and reading things a little farther than one chapter at a time, but I noticed a con a uh, 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 almost a methodology, um, one. Uh, God would speak judgment over a nation uh, or no, it started out where he was angry with a nation, said what he was angry about. He spoke a judgment over the nation. Then he spoke uh, uh, the nation would be called back to him. Then he called the nation back to him and then they responded and he spoke a forever blessing over the nation. And I watched this nation after nation after nation after nation. I just want to challenge our amazing uh, European prophets, particularly. Um, what cycle are we in? Not that it has to follow that, because we know that we tear down, pull down, destroy, build and plant, and God can do all at the same time. But to also recognize that when we are speaking a judgment or we feel the anger of God, you're going to have to be ready for your lips to speak a blessing in a very short time, <laughs> you know, because it's the fullness of the character of God. And so I wanted to come kind of as a, not as a compromised voice, but I wanted to come as a place to keep you from getting stuck prophets and prophetic people. We do carry the intent of what God is saying. But remember, God doesn't uh, throw away his mercy, his love, his grace. Not only that, there is a righteousness and a truth that he carries that we only get part of. And so when we share that part, we need to know the next shoe is going to drop or the penny will drop later and we will have the other part to share. 
and or someone else will. And then the media, social media will try to pit this prophet against that prophet because they did not speak the same thing. But what they're doing is they're not limiting the prophets, even though that's what it looks like. They're really limiting God and what he can do, how much he can do simultaneously. I release the omnipresence of God the, uh, in Europe. I release the omnipresence of God among the prophets right now uh, uh, in the nations. I call forth the prophets to the nations that you would have uh, God's anger in your mouth when it's time to have God's anger in your mouth, that you would have God's judgment in your mouth when it's time to have God's judgment in your mouth. You will have God's uh, 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 turning in your mouth when it's time of turning. You will have God's uh, reconciliation and grace in your mouth when it's time. You will have God's blessings and forgiveness and realignment and double for your trouble in your mouth when it's those times as well. Father, right now, we don't want to stylize our prophets. Father, we want them to carry you. And just in saying that, um, I, I felt like the Lord told me this this morning that, um, he said, uh, I need you to come up here so I can come down there. Um, prophets, that means we have to be able to see more. We have to have a, a better perspective, an overview and if we want the will of heaven upon the earth, a greater manifest glory upon the earth, which is going to have its outworking as a revival, awakening, uh, a harvest, a reformation. If we're going to have that, we have got to come up there so he can come down here. Father, right now, we thank you. We ask that you would use each of us Father, as landing strips for your will on earth, we ask that you would use each of us, Father, with the revelation, the insight, the perception from glory and heavenly realms and just the above. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, that we would hold that position as that we are seated in heavenly places with you, that we might be one, Father, that is not overwhelmed by what we see going on in the earth, but we see the bigger picture. Father, right now, we just say, God, we submit. No, we don't like that word, but we submit to that. But we want it too. We want to come up there. So we just answer your invitation. So wherever you're listening to this, whether you're listening to this uh, when it's first uh, released or whether you're listening to an archive of it, can you just respond right now? When he says, come up here, your answer is, here I come. Just say that right where you are. Here I come. <laughs> here I come. And the his response to that is, here I come. We bless you this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen, Dr. Sharon. Wow. Rob, we'd love to invite you now just to share what God has placed on your heart, please. And if there's a song of the Lord in it too, please feel free to do that. For those wow. that don't know, Rob is is a uh, prophetic worship leader, but he is also a national uh, and prophet to the nations. And so often people make intercessory a prophetic people and worship prophetic people somehow less in the prophets to the nations. And we just don't go there. So we just think you ha have multiple anointings. Rob, uh, please release God to us this morning. <laughs> Oh, bless you. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Sharon and Dr. Arlene. It's really an honor to be with you. Hi, Milan. Really great to see you. Um, and uh, just before we came on, Dr. Sharon and Dr. Arlene asked me if I had a song of the Lord, and I didn't. <laughs> but as Dr. Sharon was speaking, as often happens, you know, the Spirit of the Lord starts to move. And, um, and I just heard the Spirit of the Lord sing to us from Job 38. And um, yeah, this is just what I heard the Lord sing. Where were you 
When I laid the foundations of the earth, who are you that you think you know my ways? Oh, who are you? Oh, who are you, oh man? For it is I, I am the Lord, who know the end from the beginning and all that is to come. So come up here, let me show you new and wonderful things that you have not known. For who are you? And where were you? The mysteries are mine and mine alone, but I will choose to reveal them to you, my sons and daughters. For I made you a kingdom. A priest to our God, and you will rule, and you will reign. These are the days when I'll show you the things that are to come. If you come up here, if you come up here. If you come up here, for I am the great I am, and I am unshakable, says the Lord. I am the one who strengthens you. So be not afraid, just come up here, come up now, come in closer than you've ever dared. So come up here and come up now, I am waiting. I am waiting for you. Yeah, and I just hear a deep longing in the Father's heart. I just hear just such an aching in his heart. I just hear the Lord say, I actually have been lonely waiting for people who would come up and in to the heavenly realm, to the place where I am, where I can reveal my secrets. I hear the Father say, Uh, No one knows the Father but the Son and those whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. And I just heard the Lord say for 2,000 years, the Son has been longing for a company of people, not just one or two, but a great multitude that He can reveal the Father's heart to in a greater measure. And Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants, but I call you friends. And the Lord says, these are the days of the friends of the bridegroom, the ones like John the Baptist, to whom the Spirit of the Lord can reveal the things that are to come. The days of the friend of the bridegroom, the friends of the Son. And the Lord says, how long will you let me be lonely for you? How long will you let my heart ache for intimacy with you. For the Spirit of the Lord says, my heart aches for you more than you ache for me. And the Lord says, for surely I want to show you that Jesus is the desire of the nations and all the raging and all the noise of the nations is because of the ache within them for their beautiful bridegroom king, their warrior king who comes with 10,000 upon 10,000 angels to rule and to govern the earth in righteousness and justice. So Father, this morning, we just say, oh, catch us up, God. (laughs) 
Catch us up, Father. I ask for a release of the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of Jesus, the desire of the nations. Lord, I ask for a humility to be on the prophets, Father God, that we would be, oh God, we were not there when you created the heavens and the earth. We are not ones with understanding, but you are so ready to release it to us. So Father, we honor you today and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Um, yeah, so it's great to be with you. Um, it's kind of one of those times where you're like, well, which word do I release first? And <laughs> you'll just have to shout at me uh, if I'm going if I'm going too long. Um, but, you know, actually, I feel to just start with a word that I haven't released publicly yet. Um, and uh, I. Uh, I heard uh, in October, I heard the Lord say the word fresh to me. And then he just started to release to me revelation about all the fresh things that are to come uh, as we enter 2022. I believe there are things that we need to do at the end of 2021 to prepare. But um, I, I heard the Lord say, I'll go through some of these really quickly, but there are some which I feel the Lord really wants to emphasize. Um, I heard uh, fresh air, fresh attempts on life, fresh winds, fresh faces, fresh fish and fresh feet. Those were the headlines that I heard, okay? So this has nothing to do with foot hygiene, but hey. Um, so uh, fresh air. Uh, these are just some little vignettes. I felt like the Lord said that there were going to be breakthroughs in environmental innovation, particularly uh, with to do with the atmosphere. And uh, I also felt the Lord say there were going to be breakthroughs in asthma and lung health, um, particularly in chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, and I actually felt there were going to be some breakthroughs even in the treatment of people who have lung scarring after COVID. Uh, but the Lord says there is going to be a fresh air of the Spirit of God that we are going to be breathing, the atmosphere of the Spirit of God. The Lord says no longer is it just that the Spirit of God will be on the inside of you, but you will be on the inside of the Spirit, says the Lord. Uh, and the Lord says, these as the, are the days of the fresh winds of my spirit. But as the wind of the spirit blows, so will unusual storms, even in the natural. And I even saw that there were storms coming. And I don't know whether this is metaphorical or literal, but I saw crops being flattened. And I felt like the Lord say that there are even resources in the earth that the Lord is going to allow to be selectively released in this time. And I felt like the Lord saying that... Um, uh, I'm going to talk about storehouses in a minute, but I believe the Lord is bringing us into a place of uh, building storehouses that benefit nations. But I feel like the Lord is saying, even as Elijah spoke to the rains and stopped up the heavens, I believe that the, the people of God, the prophets of God are being called upon in this time to actually speak a, a binding and a loosing to resources in the earth. And that there is a wind of the spirit to see that. And I feel like the Lord is saying where resources are being used for corrupt purposes, we actually get to speak a cessation over that in the name of Jesus as the wind of the spirit blows on them. And I believe that's part of what I was seeing with the flattening of the, the crops. Um, and, I, and I also felt like the Lord said there are fresh attempts on life in this season. And I saw two strands, uh, both at the beginning and end of life. I saw assisted suicide uh, ramping up in the earth like never before. And I saw abortion as well. And I felt like the Lord said these are these are twin battlegrounds, the beginnings and the ends of life. And that the Lord is saying uh, that, that we will see those fresh attempts, even in nations that have never had those things enshrined in law, that there will be uh, overt attempts to it. But I also believe like the Lord is saying that there are fresh uh, winds blowing for us to see those things brought to an end as well. And then fresh faces. And I thought this is uh, actually really interesting that we see today. I think it is that Chancellor Merkel is stepping down in Germany. Uh, and I heard the Lord say there are new leaders rising up in political and the ecclesiastical world. And I even believe that we're going to see a uh, major uh, <clears throat> the leaders of major uh, denominations uh, stepping down. And I, I, I saw the Lord replacing chess pieces. And I, I believe that the Lord is saying, I just saw bishops being replaced. 
Uh, and, and I felt like the Lord is saying, because they have not stood in the counsel of the Lord and they have not spoken, they're like the, the false shepherds in uh, Ezekiel. And the Lord says, I am going to remove them from those positions and I'm going to place in that place. Uh, we're going to see even, I feel like in the... Um, uh, uh, Episcopal uh, and Presbyterian type uh, Anglican denominations across Europe, so including the Lutherans, so the Reformed denominations. I can, I believe, we're going to see uh, senior, new senior bishops in those places, but much younger ones, much younger ones who are radicals. I just see the Lord raising up a radical, Holy Spirit filled uh, 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 new uh, generation of bishops in those places. And then I had fresh fish, and and I believe the Lord is saying that there is a mighty harvest of fish coming. But the Lord is particularly highlighting the the coastlands. I believe the coastal areas of, of the nations. So the nations of Europe, that and most of the nations in Europe border coasts in one way or another. But I just see the Lord saying, even those forgotten places on the coasts uh, will be places of great harvest, particularly the poorest places. Uh, and even those that have seen a, a decimation even in the past 30 years of their industries to do with fish. I believe the Lord says there's a great harvest of souls awaiting there. It, uh, in these new, uh, in this next season. And I even saw scientific discoveries. I, I don't know why, but I heard the Lord say bioluminescence. And I know there are, there are fish and things living deep down in the dark places of the oceans. But I, I saw the Lord saying he's going to bring out the treasures of the deep. And there are things there that are going to be of great scientific a revolution to us for, for really amazing things. Even in the medical field, I saw these bioluminescence things being used to help. And then this fresh feet, the fresh mobilization of evangelism. And I really believe that the Lord is saying, uh, how do I put this politely? I feel like the Lord is saying the prophetic movement has become too introspective. I felt like the Lord say it's become too focused on the church uh, structures and organizations and not focused enough on the mission of God in the earth for the extension of the kingdom. That the Lord is saying this isn't about self-preservation. This is about uh, uh, bringing in the lost, the great harvest. Um, and, and, and I feel like the Lord is saying, church, get ready for me to turn your world upside down as I bring in the great harvest. And then the Lord says, these are not people who are going to be, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> they're not people who are going to be sanctified. These are going to be the, the difficult and the, the uncomfortable. They are going to make our church services look completely different. Uh, I, I feel like the Lord says we've been too used to order and structure. And these are not people who are just going to sit through our sermons. They're going to be the ones heckling and asking questions in the middle of it. And they're going to be the ones saying, you're boring. You're talking too long. Tell us something. They're the ones who want the power of God. They don't want our, 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 our eulogizing. And I feel like the spirit of the Lord is saying it's going to be a real shakeup. But the Lord says, get ready, get ready. It's going to be ex exciting, actually. And I felt like the Lord say as well, I saw the feet of the prophets in fetters, as in uh, Psalm 105, where it says that, that, that Joseph's feet were placed in fetters. And it says the word of the Lord tested him. And I really believe this is a season where the Lord is saying the prophets are going to be tested by the words that they carry. Um, and, and one of the things Dr. Sharon says is that the prophets often get to reap the first fruits of the words that they release. Uh, and, and I really believe that that's going to be true. And I believe it's going to be true on multiple levels. I even believe, you know, you hear that as a negative word, but I actually believe the Lord says there's going to be a testing of some prophets by the abundance that they step into. You know, it's often wealth and fame that test people, not just poverty and hardship. And I feel like the Lord is saying there are going to be some prophetic voices that are accelerated and promoted into such a space. And I believe it's going to be uncomfortable for some prophetic movements in the earth because they're going to come out of nations, uh, particularly some in Europe. I hear Albania being uh, promoted and raised up. I hear Eastern Bloc nations being brought forth. And the spirit of the Lord says they're going to be brought forth into such a mighty place uh, that it's going to confound the traditional prophetic voices in the earth because they kind of come with such a freshness that the spirit of the Lord says that is also going to test them uh, as, as, as abundance and wealth and uh, fame start to come their way. The Lord says, will they have a voice that remains uncorruptible in the midst of that? And so um, <clears throat> I also um, 
that Joseph thing, I, very briefly, I do believe this is the season where the Lord says, I'm raising up the Joseph archetypes in this time, the reformers, the ones Jesus said, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust and fire and all those different things can destroy them, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. And we, 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 we believe that that's to do with character and we believe that's to do with seeing the lost saved and all of those kinds of things. I believe that's true. But the Lord is saying, and Dr. Sharon uh, in 2019 did a whole sermon series on kingdom benefactors. But I believe the Lord is saying, if you will be those who build storehouses for nations, I will fill them, says the Lord. And I believe the end of 21, as we go into 22, is a time of accelerated revelation that's coming on those in the body of Christ who will build. And this week I woke up in my spirit and one morning I just heard the Lord say, you must plan and implement action this week. And so I got on Instagram and started releasing this word because I felt the urgency in my spirit. And I've just spent every spare minute this week building and planning for next year because I believe that there is such a grace on it, but it must, we must get ahead of the curve. And so I really feel like the Lord is saying, for those who will build for nations, I will fill those storehouses. And there's a lot more to say on that, but th that's just some headlines of what I'm carrying at the moment. Wow, Rob. Heavy revelation in a good way. I, you just feel the weight of the Lord on that uh, revelation. And I find it, I was really, really stirred indeed by what you uh, said you know just about the coastlands and stuff why am i saying that just because as we said a number of times already on these broadcasts we're encouraging prophets now to be specific in their prophetic words not just we're moving beyond encouragement comfort and edification those things will always be you know just wonderfully uh needed in the body of christ but the coastlands specific word and also that word about the prophetic becoming too introspective that's carrying a lot of weight on it right now rob would you just be willing to pray and just to pray into that quickly please so that our gaze as we move into and enter 2022 would not be introspective but would be focused on what what god is doing in the world Mm, yeah, absolutely. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you that, uh, Lord, your word says you do no good thing without first revealing it to your servants, the prophets. And Father God, we come into agreement today, uh, Lord, with you, that you long for there to be a great harvest in the coastlands of Europe, Father God, that you long for revival to come in those places that have been forgotten, Father God, even the, the poor and impoverished uh, seaside places, Lord, the, the fishing villages, the fishing towns, Father God, those places which have lost their industries, Father God, those places that governments have forgotten, Father God, those gateway places, Father God, even uh, 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 that, that in uh, centuries past, Father God, were gateways into nations, but have now fallen into dereliction. Father God, we thank you that you take the weak things of the world to shame the strong and the foolish things to shame the wise. And Father God, we thank you for that revival coming into those places. And Father God, we also pray for the prophetic movement, oh God. I pray, Father God, that we would be outlook, outward looking, Father God, that we would be looking to the harvest fields. We would be looking to those who are not yet saved. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would remind us of the desperation of the lost, Father God. Hallelujah. The futile lives that they live, Father God, that their eternal destiny, and unless they come to the knowledge of you, Jesus, is an eternity without you, Father God, a continuous torment without you, Jesus. Father, where we have become too comfortable in our clubs, our churches that have become clubs, social clubs, Father God, rather than mission centers, Father God, for the salvation of the earth. God, remind us of our primary mission to love you and love the lost. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, shake the prophets out of complacency, Father God, where we have released words that have simply been for the blessing of our social clubs rather, from the, rather than for the salvation of nations, where we've become entwined in political arguments, Father God, rather than uh, in seeing the advancement of the kingdom of God. We repent, Father God. We are so sorry where we have partnered with that. God, I'm asking 
asking in the name of Jesus, sharpen us, shake us out of our complacency, God. Rid us of our proclivity and our preferences, Jesus, even of our biases, Father God, and bring us into the place of divine objectivity where we can release the true, pure word of the Lord. God, we want to be a pure stream for the word of God. And Lord, break off us the fear of man. Give us the fear of the Lord, Father God, that we would not be intimidated. So Lord, we bless you. We bless you. And we say, blow, wind of God, refresh us. Let the refreshing of the spirit of God come upon the prophets in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. Thank you very much, Rob. Milan, we invite you to share what God has given to you. Thank you. Um, it's a privilege to, to be here with you, uh, Dr. Sherlene and Dr. Sharon. Rob, great song. I will not sing to you. Uh, uh, Rob, you did amazing. Uh, it was, uh, we, we're going to you to slow, steal you to Slovakia, you know, just to teach some, some worship leaders how to, how to bring this uh, into their churches. Amazing. Thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, one of the words what I what I um, what I heard and and I'm working with is a first love, and I know, I know it's a broad it's a broad uh, uh, topic, and we can talk like hours hours, and uh, it's so many things connected to the first love. But but very shortly, just um, first love. You know, when we are nobody, when we don't know nothing, when we never reached anything, we have no ministries, no titles, nothing. We know only one thing. Jesus died for me. He changed my trajectory. He changed my life, you know, and this, and, and out of this uh, divine passion of being with him in his presence, you know, I, I want to do this. I want to be there. I want to be youthful. You know, it's not about what I'm going to reach. And I'm not saying we're not planning. We're not desiring. We're not dreaming and you know, all that. But but this this pure passion be with Christ in His presence, and I really believe for the churches right now, after these twenty months of pandemic and everything we're going through, you know, the the main thing is the main thing, the ma- and the main thing is be in the presence, the, the taking the room of the throne, uh, the throne room back to the church, you know, and and actually out of that, uh, bringing the power out, you know, like it's it's like cycle. Uh, where where we are becoming a tube of the God's power and His oil of anointing, and this anointing it's not we just releasing out of our experience and our results and our miracles we seen or experienced and, and prophetic words were you know proved and all that and it's all great, but we are coming out of our experience of a divine encounter with Jesus, and that oil is different. That's kind of oil is different. You know, it's not just oil anointing something on it's a multiplication oil. It's 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 a, it's one word and it multiplies immediately in many words. It's same thing as Robo sharing about the nations, it's the same thing in my heart. You know, I see in this picture that uh, you know, these old school churches having many flags in their church back on the stage. But God is you know, this is the spiritual picture. Uh, uh you know, stop working for your flag. Amen. Stop praying for your flag. This is not about the flag. This is about the nations. This is about the world, you know, and, and uni- unifying these things together right now. In, in, uh, as enemy is trying to unify, uh, uh, unify the, the, the evil stuff together uh, based on different spheres and topic, you know, and, and at the same time, he's trying to separate and bring in a separation uh, in the church and, and in, in the groups and in the movements. God is saying, uh, you know, unity unifies one nation as many nations. And I had this dream or vision, um, uh, seeing, seeing, you know, uh, a, a ceiling <clears throat> which holds a lot of water. And uh, and these droplets of water were heavy and low, and 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 I, I was looking at that and I was thinking, oh my, what is this? And and God is, I just had this word, ready to fall, ready to fall, and um, and I believe you know it's a ceiling is represents so many times uh, uh, could represent the protection, the shelter, uh, undercover, and good things, you know. And as ceiling can speak of your of, of our you know uh, home safety and all that, but I believe this this is represents a a time when it's um, confinement, uh, as something holds us back, something uh, uh, stuck. We stuck in somewhere. It's in confinement, uh, and and the ceiling can also be a barrier to our progress. 
And I, as I believe in 2020, we were battling with, uh, with depression and fear. And in 21, it's a separation, you know, over, over everything really. And, and, but we believe in 22, we're going and stepping in the promotion. And, uh, and so many times the persecution, you know, precede promotion. But I just believe the promotion is going to happen. And, and, and the ceiling, it's a limitation, which is kind of holiness, you know, and we're thinking we are here, what are we going to do? But, you know, I, I just, it just reminded me that, that when, when disciples went into the upper room and kind of confinement of waiting, if this is going to happen with this question, is this breakthrough time or not? You know, we are waiting for the Father's promise, but we are in convenient because the circumstances are so heavy and tough uh, and things are happening and we are under fear and under depression. Our master died. We don't know what's going to happen. But in the confinement time or in the confinement place, God birth, it's a birthplace for a fresh outpouring. And I just believe that's that, that in this confinement we are right now as a church, as a movement, God is going to birth a fresh a new outpouring of the spirit. And that outpouring happened with the disciples 20 years ago. Uh, I mean, 2000 years ago. Uh, it's, it's changed nations and the history. And I believe in 22, uh, th this, this, this outpouring is going to happen. This, uh, and, I, and I not calling only revival, uh, because we've seen revivals hitting like one generation, but, but I really believe the multiplication in a re revival is unstoppable cycle when it starts now and it's never, it, it will never end. It will be just from generation to generation. And that's another thing I really believe that, uh, you know, and, and the releasing a new generation is one of the keys uh, uh, we, we uh, need to work on together. And especially in the prophetic movement, and movement, uh, just 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 to see the new fresh voices of the young people uh, to to stand up and be bold, uh, speak out the God's voice, and uh, um, yeah, and and, and s same way as, uh, as 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 Paul and Silas were in the prison, you know, touched and and and, and locked to the ground, but their voices touched the heaven, and that opened the the prophetic realms when the the angels came and when the when the heaven invaded the place and everything changed and, and i i just this 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 kind of uh worship and this kind of uh interceding and praying we need to come, get get back to the church because this is as we heard this is not an inner thing this is not having a nice nice praying club or nice prophetic sessions this is about opening a new door it's not only a door it's a double door opening a total new level the ceiling is removing and there is a new level so it's a barrier but once the barrier of removing it's a new level and we know we go, never go back and 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 just just bring and seeing the prophetic movement going to a new level this 22 uh just unifying together and especially also the alignments of apostolic and prophetic uh, I, I think this this will be this was probably the topic for last two, three years, very strong. But but this year, uh, I, I just really pray. And we I want to see, and, I, and I got, God was speaking to me about it, it. We need to have intention in it. It's not only going to happen because we would like to see it. We need to have an intention to do it, to work on it, to to promote it, to to go after it, to see this unif unification, this this uh, uh, uni unifying the, the prophets and the apostles and, and bringing out what God created to, to, to out of it to, to be uh, because God created apostles and prophets to bring the direction. And the same for evangelists praying for healing and see that as a you know, result of God's power uh, changing the physical status of the person, I think we, with uh, with our prophetic movements, we need to see. This is not about just to uh, having a nice words or you know encouragement, and, uh, and it's all good. But it's actually uh, it's it's uh, in a, in a way it's a deliverance of trajectory. It's it's like, hey guys, we need to get you back on track where God prepared for you, for your church, for your movement, for your life something which is so important and he want to release that through you and we as a prophet we need to think about it like this is what we what we can do to uh to bring this um uh deliverance of of direction uh of 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 getting 
uh, people back on the track, getting churches back on the track. And um, <clears throat> yeah, um, and, and, and about the first love that was mentioned in the, in the beginning, I just, you know, um, I was praying in my spirit and said, God, I want that first love. I, I, I really, really go back deep. And uh, not because it's a beginnings. And sometimes we think when we are new boys or we are in beginnings, it's, it's you know, we, we, we weak. But I just combine those two things like uh, being mature in the word, but at the same time being childlike in faith. You know, sometimes those two things goes like no together because we are adult or not, we are mature or not. But these two things that have a faith really childlike, you know, trusting God in everything, but at the same time being being mature in the word and and really speaking out the the, the God's word the, with the voice of uh, um, uh, of the confidence and uh, and especially especially in the new generation. And you know, uh, uh, when when Jesus speaks to disciples about that. About, about the first love and and then he speaks in in uh, in john 15 he speaks about pruning and you know pruning is painful it's humble you know it's humbling us and and we don't want it really because we we, we heard we're pruning and we think oh you know it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be painful but but then he says amazing thing and he says to disciples but you are clean you are pruned because you listened my word and I, I believe so much in this that, you know, the pruning don't need to be painful if we listen to the voice of God, if we listen to how God speaks. We connect with the word, we release the word, and not just we receive that, but actually releasing that uh, lightness of living in the God's word. You know, that's why Jesus said, my burden is not heavy, it's easy, it's light, because it's not about a life which is easy, it's about we living in the direction of God. Is burn is is a light burden, uh, and and it's 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 that connection. So um, I just I just want to uh, probably finish with this that um, I really uh, I've really seen twenty two uh, the the step up in the in 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 the releasing prophetic words very um, um, defining very defining the direction and trajectory. Uh, of what's going to happen in in the churches, it's back, taking taking things back on a track. Uh, you know that's that's really it's it's really, we're going to see really result of when we speak the word out, when we're telling what God says, and this word going to do what always done, taking things back to the track on the track, taking things things back to God, and and just the presence of God, the thickness. Of presence of God, you know, when when we when we can see this in our own life Amen. and we can bring it to the church, the same, you know, the room, uh, the throne room in the church, when we fed up with uh, filled with filled up with the presence of God, then we can bring the the, the brilliant and the fresh uh, word of God to the people. Um, so, yeah, be blessed. Thank you so much, Milan. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have given more time because uh, we definitely wanted that song of the Lord this morning as well. But also we wanted you guys to feel like you put meat on the bones with the revelation that you carried as both of you being uh, mature national prophets. But I just wanted to uh, uh, invite Dr. Arlene to take a couple minutes or ever how much time she wants to take. And just share on the back of that something that the Spirit of the Lord has been speaking to her. Thank you, Dr. Sharon. Um, I'll do that and I will keep it short, but I just keep hearing the Spirit of the Lord as I was preparing for this broadcast this morning, just saying, come out, come out, come out of her, my people. And this wasn't a cry to come out of the world. The Lord was saying, come out of the old religious structures. I'm prophesying to the Church of Christ now in Europe, come out of the old religious structures in your minds and in your heart that have confined and encapsulated my people for so long. The Lord is saying this is a day in an age in which I am shaking and I am breaking old structures. The Lord is saying it's 
the old structures that have become more dependent on the traditions of man than on my Holy Spirit. God is saying, indeed, the wind of my spirit is blowing again through the church in Europe. And as you come out, says the Lord, do not mourn what is being blown over and is coming to an end. The Lord is saying, rejoice, because this is a day of your deliverance. Oh, God is yeah. saying, it was never my intent for the church to be a permanent shelter from the world. This shaking and this blowing is meant to thrust you out into the world. And the Lord is saying, I am calling you out of confinement and out of complacency. I am calling you out of, uh, yeah, what was it? I'm calling you out of confinement and out of complacency. I am calling you out of your lukewarmness. And as you answer my crisis, the Lord, I'm going to set your hearts on fire again yeah. with a passion for my name and with a passion for my house in the nations that I'm returning my body on the earth, says the Lord, and in Europe, well, to her original roots, the Lord says, I'm raising up my church as these structures fall. Out of it will come a nation-changing, soul-winning, people movement, the thing that the church was yeah. always mm -hmm. meant to be. And so the Lord is saying, as you embrace my winds, as you embrace my storm, the Lord is saying, you're going to also be re or embracing my revolution yeah. into the new. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We so appreciate you joining us today. And for those of you that are listening to this, remember the reason that we're giving this time and these things spoken is not just so that you have an aha moment. It really is for your relationship, for an impartation, for a application, for um, uh, a greater uh, working together with God, but also your ability to influence others with what the Spirit of God is saying. But for many of you, you don't have a platform for your prophetic voice. And as you're hearing some of these things and you're going, oh, I God told me that, God told me that, there is something that happens. It's not like someone robbed you of your your limelight or 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 showcasing what your revelation was. It's that confidence that God says, "I do nothing except I speak to my servants, the prophets." Come on, rise up, be bold, declare and trumpet what the Spirit of God has given you. We will see you next time. God bless you. <laughs>